David here and the project for today is flushing the brake system. You guys are probably wondering if I disconnected a part in the hydraulic system that would require bleeding and no. This is a project that I do every two years. I like to get the impurities and the moisture out of the system and get new brake fluid in the system. I always start out with a fresh bottle of fluid and it takes about a quart to a quart and a pint to bleed the system for all four wheels and since this is a manual transmission car the clutch is hydraulic and the clutch hydraulic system shares the same fluid as the brake system so I'm not going to be able to show it to you because I can't get a camera in there but I have to get under the car by the bell housing of the transmission and there's a little bleeder valve there that requires bleeding as well so I like to do that as well the uh, uh, reason why I like to have clean fluid is that I keep my cars for 20 years. If you're going to keep your car for five or six years, you don't need to worry about that. But I like to get the moisture out. The moisture can cause um, corrosion of the internal brake parts. Uh, having moisture in your brake fluid uh, lowers the boiling point. So if you're going down a mountain and your brakes are real hot, uh, if you have a uh, full 100% brake fluid, the boiling point is higher and your brake fluid won't boil away. If you have a lot of moisture in your brake fluid, it's uh, going to be easier for that brake fluid to, uh, to boil away. And when that happens, you have no brake, so it could be dangerous. So brake fluid, by its nature, is hygroscopic. There's a new word for today. Hygroscopic means uh, it's a, a substance or a fluid that likes to absorb moisture and even though the cap is on your uh, brake fluid reservoir it still happens to pick up moisture from the atmosphere and there's moisture in the atmosphere so I believe that's where it comes from. By the way, are you guys keeping a log book? of your maintenance on your vehicle. If you want your car to last a long time, you should. You know why your planes last 50, 60, 70 years? Because of routine maintenance. Get yourself one of these calendars. Doesn't matter what year it's from. There are people giving them away all the time in uh, November and December. Get yourself one of these. They always have blank pages on them. And uh, I use that for my maintenance. I've had this car for 19 years. I've only used 16 pages. And the first page has the uh, model numbers of all the different filters and the capacity of the oil transmission, cooling system, and fuel tank. So I'm going to put a new entry in today for flushing the system. And uh, to start the flush, what you do is get a turkey baster and uh, take as much fluid out of the brake reservoir as you can and then fill it with fresh fluid. And then you're going to find you're going to have to fluid, you're going to have to uh, refill the reservoir at every wheel. And if you're, you're flushing a lot of system or if you're flushing a lot of fluid out of that caliper on that one wheel a lot, you might have to fill it twice while you're there, but you're going to have to keep checking it. If you don't check it and it goes low, you're going to get air in there and you're going to have to do it all over again and waste a lot of new brake fluid. So I have a turkey baster that's just dedicated for brake fluid because I don't want to get any contamination of anything else into my, my brake fluid. Also, I'm going to try something new. I usually have an assistant helping me bleed and I'm going to give her a break this time and I went to a wrecking yard and I got a cap that matches this car. This is a Ford Contour. Uh, I might be shooting myself in the foot because that means when I get a new car this is probably not going to be any good anymore because it's probably not going to fit my reservoir so I'm going to have to rig up something else. But for now I got this. I drilled a hole in it. It's a 7 16 inch hole and the um, there's a gasket that goes in here that is easily removable and uh, it looks like it fell out but there's a rubber gasket that goes in here that I removed in order to drill the hole. Oh, here's a gasket. There's a gasket that goes in the cap like that. You see how easy that was to come out? 
And I also have a, I have one of these locking uh, air supply. This is for my, uh, my compressor. This goes on the end of the hose. This will lock onto a tire valve. Because in this hole, I'm going to put a tire valve in there. And I'm going to put about low pressure. You don't want 90 pounds or anything like that. You put about 10 or 15 pounds of air pressure on the system. But some of these metal tire valves. These are one and a half inch long metal bolt-in tire valves. They, uh, they can fit uh, two different size rim holes. So they give you two, two pieces of plastic. There's a larger one. I'm going to use a smaller one. This will fit 7 16 so I'm going to put that in the cap and uh, I'll put a little pressure on there. There I'll have uh, full pressure and I won't have to have an assistant pumping and holding down the brakes for me. I know a lot of guys do the gravity bleed system. I've never done it before. I kind of don't trust it because I have a feeling that uh, air might get in there somehow. So I like having a little bit of pressure on the system when I do it. So I'm going to get to work. I'm going to get the car up on jack stands and uh, remove the wheels. Uh, anytime you work on your car, never work with a jack. Jack it up with the jack and then lower it on jack stands. A lot of people have been injured and killed by having their cars fall on them. Be really careful not to get any of this brake fluid on your paint because it will eat your paint away. By the way, I got the idea for the pressure bleeder from Ivan at Pine Hollow Diagnostics. If you guys enjoy working on cars, I highly recommend you subscribe to Pine Hollow Diagnostics. Ivan's a great diagnostician and mechanic. And also there's Paul Danner. His YouTube channel is Scanner Danner. And, uh, Another good diagnostician is Eric O. at South Main Auto. South Main Auto is the name of his YouTube page. I'm going to take the little valve out of here. Only because I don't want the pressure to stay on when I take the hose off. I just want to pressurize while I'm bleeding. Hey, can you see that? Focusing, taking that little, little valve out of there. There. Focus, come on. Just taking that out. Turn the pressure on the compressor. There we go. That's probably about 15. Well, there was no air pressure coming out when I put the hose on this without the valve, so I reinstalled the valve. I'll hook the air up to it. Now I have air coming out. You can probably hear it. So I just have to remember to loosen the cap when I'm done uh, bleeding each wheel. I'm starting on the right rear and then from there I go to the left front. This is a dual diagonal system which means the hydraulic system has been split in two for safety purposes in case you break a hose or a hose rusts out you'll still have two wheels working and it's diagonal so that you have a front and a rear on the same circuit. So they have to be diagonal because if the, you only have brakes on the right front and the right rear working, the car's going to swerve. So that's why they, they make dual diagonal. So I've got a, a hose set up to a bottle. Let's see if, uh, open up the valve, let's see if anything comes out. Oh, 
whenever I had to pump up the pressure a little bit. It's probably 20 pounds. It's still slow at 20 pounds, but it's coming. I'm afraid of putting too much pressure on it. Doesn't look too dirty after two years. I am now on the left front. I think it's funny that the right rear is a 9mm bleeder and the fronts are 11mm bleeders. That's odd. So when I'm done with this, I'm going to go to the left rear and then the right front and then I'll do the clutch. And uh, there's really not that much to show you guys. I want to thank you for watching. You may want to consider subscribing. Don't forget to click the bell so you get notifications. And I'd appreciate it if you click like as well. Thanks very much. Bye if now. you're doing all four wheels, this is what I pulled out of there. Let's get it in the sunlight. I've seen worse. Pretty amber colored. But I feel good having clean brake fluid in there now. Well, the brakes are hard as a rock, but the clutch, not so much. The clutch is pretty much gone. So I don't think the clutch likes the power bleeder. I'm waiting for my assistant to come back and we're going to manually bleed it. And also I'm running low on brake fluid, so I'm going to get another pint of brake fluid. Well, we'll since I have to re-bleed the clutch again, I'm going to show you guys where the bleeder valve is for the clutch under the car come down here see up there bell housing Let's see if I get the camera up there can't see the viewfinder but the bleeders on the end of the wrench there if you can see it There it is. You guys are getting a better view of the test. That manual bleed of the clutch did the trick. However, I had to do it several times. I had to pump that clutch about 30 times to get the air out. And I noticed the clutch is grabbing a lot earlier than it used to. Also, that uh, bleeder screw on the clutch, if you have a Ford Contour, is 8 millimeters. So to do the whole bleeding process, you need an 8, a 9, and 11 millimeter wrench. So uh, once again, thanks for watching. Bye now. You critics don't define our honor. You try to shame us for doing our job. You teach children to fear us, crowds to attack us, and good people to doubt us. But we will never back down from our sworn duty to uphold the Constitution of the United States of America. We wake up every day, put on our badge, strap a gun to our hips, kiss our families goodbye, put our lives between the law-abiding and any criminal who threatens their rights. We serve people of every color and creed, men, women, and children in violent, dangerous neighborhoods, because they have the same right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness as CEOs, movie stars, and the political elite. We are Americans, and we are the American police officer. We stand with the National Rifle Association of America and the NRA stands with us. Together, we're freedom's safest place.